Because like I was in second grade when 9-11 happened. Okay. And my sister who was in kindergarten doesn't remember it. So I think like, to your point, I think I'm kind of the end of the people who remember it. So it's obviously had a huge impact on almost everything I've done. And I think it would regardless, because you see people like my husband who is not from a military family and it made an impact on him and stuff like that. But I remember asking, I think it was, it must've been second or third grade that we were learning about history and like learning about wars and like just talking to my dad and being like, so like, is that what you do? Like, you know, like, cause they didn't know. And, um, just asking like, well, why do they start? Why do people want to hurt people? Like, why do people fight over land? Like, you know, me being second grade, like, you yeah. know, you remember me when I was oh, a second grader. Questions, right? like, yeah. You it out. Yeah, and just like, at one point remembering my dad say like, well, that doesn't happen anymore. Like that's, you know, we don't, that's not gonna, you don't have to worry about that with me. And so, I mean, that must have been pre 9-11 that that conversation happened. Because yeah, it was like a matter of, weeks or months later that that happened. And then even then there was that period of time from like 2001, 2003, where it was kind of like, hmm. Yeah, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. Nobody really knows. Which as a kid, I had no idea what was going on. Now that I look back on the timeline, I'm like, oh. But I remember being, we were actually at, so my dad was in Germany for some reason, I think on TDY, and went straight from Germany to Baghdad. So, like, I, all I knew was that he was in Germany, and we were in spring break, and we were in Austin, and my mom had taken me and some of our friends there, and I remember watching, like, the countdown of, I, I'm so bad at history, Dakota be mad, but, like, somebody, <laughs> somebody had, like, 24 hours to surrender, we were right. gonna invade Iraq, yeah. um, and, like, there was a countdown on, like, primetime TV, like, like, it was, like, the end of the Super Bowl, but, like, it wasn't, like, it was, like, people were there. It was a and, war, yeah. Yeah, like, it, then it, you know, I remember like the really basic, like early 2000s footage of the night vision, just the green things yeah. and just not, not knowing. Um, and just so much, my mom did a great job of controlling, I think what came into the house from there, which I will say is so much, I mean, I imagine was easier in the early 2000s. Yeah. Um, that's been really hard for me just in the last couple of weeks. Like I've had to completely come off of everything like I only have like streaming on and <laughs> don't listen to the news like because it's just and I know some people think that that's you know avoiding or whatever but it's just I just don't need to see that all the time and then, like as a kid we didn't either and so we never knew so do you feel like your mom kind of like took the brunt of that or like shaped the, what was coming in your a hundred percent and Jamie were like seeing yeah a hundred percent and I think that I mean, because initially, like, we couldn't, there was no phones, there was no Facebook, there was no, like, we wrote letters to my dad, but, like, we couldn't even write letters initially because there wasn't the infrastructure, you know? Um, and so, and then I remember, like, probably after spring break, I was just, like, sitting in my elementary school, because we were at Fort Hood, so, like, everybody, like, that's another thing, too, in terms of me not knowing any different, like, this has been my whole life. All my friends growing up were military kids. Like it really wasn't until college that I saw anything different. Um, but I do remember sitting in and like, they like pulled a group of us out and it was this like school psychologist, which like I said, I work in the schools now, so they have a special place in my heart. But this woman like had no idea what to do with us. Like she just pulled us out and somebody was like, we probably need to get the kids whose parents are getting shot at and like talk to them about their feelings. Jamie's my little sister. She and I were both in there and like, there'd be kids crying and stuff. And we'd go home and be like, mom, we didn't cry today, you know? Like, which is just such a, it's just such a weird way to grow up. Like, you know, like I didn't realize until like I got to college, I was like, oh, like, you know, expressing your emotions is healthy. Like, but oh. you grow up around that culture. I mean, I'm sure you know too. Yeah, it's, well, and it's, and it's like this delicate balance, right? Because yeah. I want my kids to be able to express what they're feeling, but it's such heavy things for kids. How many years was your dad away from you? Um, so do you know this? Yeah, I. So when we sit down and look at it, like he was gone, all or parts of 2003, 2004, 2005, and then we went to Germany for two years, which was super cool because you know he didn't go anywhere, and we got to go to Germany, and then he came back. Uh, we came back, and then he left again for like 2008, 2009, 2010, and then maybe 2011 to he was there my senior year of high school. Um, which was 2012, and then he deployed again while I was in college. So that would have been maybe 2014. 
And then just recently, um, he was gone, I think for 18 months. Um, yeah, and that was, that was when I was in graduate school and that one was just like, I mean, like I, I literally told him, I was like, you're too, I'm too old for this. You're too old for this. He sent me a text and he was like, it was a group text. And he was like, we need to have like a family meeting. And this was in August and I was like, Oh my God. Like, cause, cause that's what they always did. They always sat us down. They were like, were like here's where we're moving. This, here's yeah. Where yeah. And I was, I just told Dakota, I was like, he's going to deploy. And Dakota's like, no, no. I'm like, yeah, I th that's usually what that means. Like, <laughs> what I've been on this road before. <laughs> he's like, what? You know? And so, yeah, sure enough, that was it. And it was, you know, somebody asked, they said, you know, they asked for him specifically to come and help and, you know, he couldn't say no. Cause he was, he was in DC at the time. So he was just chilling. They can't say no. Probably wasn't chilling. Sorry to everyone who works in the Pentagon, but he like, <laughs> they felt like they were just chilling cause they were just there like in DC, you know, and kind of doing their thing and yeah. Um, well, isn't it interesting <laughs> to say like, even your dad for as long as he's been in and the rank he's been at, like they told him he had to go and mm -hmm. he, has to go. Yeah, that's it. And there's no, yeah. you know, whether you're a private or a general, yep. when they say you have to go, you yeah. put your family down and you say, I gotta go. I gotta go. Yeah. Yeah. So that one, and that one was honestly the hardest, probably I think because of how old I was. Um, the one, in, the, when I was in college, it was like four or five months. He was kind of towards the end of his, because he had just taken command of the 3rd Infantry Division um, and they were finishing up a tour. but. So I don't know if I just didn't really pay attention that much or, or what. I was in college, yeah, I had other things. But yeah, no, this one, I mean, like, I was like, I was very, and I told Dakota, I think it was because part of me thought it was over and I had maybe processed some of those feelings. And like, we even have, he has a box that he calls the, because he wants his grandkids to call him Big Paw. So he has this box of stuff, like, I, there's like a big knife and like some posters and it's called the Big Paw box. And he like has typed down somewhere what all those things are about but like we haven't sat down and talked about it like we have not processed you know we had a friend I don't know if you know the, the Karchers but he was injured he lost both of his legs and that was in 2010 I believe and it was just kind of this interesting experience because like they weren't together when it happened but they had been previously together and like Mr. Karcher helped me I went to the Center for the Intrepid and did a rotation before for occupational therapy school and he was the one who told me like Oh yeah, one time I like saved your dad's life, you know, did this. And I was like, oh, like, I don't even know that. Like, you know, like, you know, cause, and you know, my dad, your dad saved my life. Like, it just, that was some of the first time I'd heard someone talk about the things that have actually gone like, on. The reality. Right? Yeah. Um, and again, I think, you know, as a kid, like you're trying to, trying to filter what they're seeing, but the reality is as now you're a full-fledged adult. I can't, right? yeah. Like you understand now. Yeah, and there's Dakota, I think sometimes, you know, he sees it and he would be interesting to talk about his point of view in this whole thing too, but he sees it like as information and I see it as people. Mm -hmm. And that's like a big disconnect that I think not only, you know, active duty people who maybe haven't been deployed, but also civilians, like they don't understand, like when they share that news article or when they post like, to me, it's a person, you know, it's, it's a friend's dad who was injured, a friend's dad who was killed. Like I have been to memorial ceremonies, like before people should go to memorial ceremonies, you know what I mean? Like, and not just one. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, this, you know, Dakota, we had a death in his family and I just kind of moved into that, like, I'll do this, do it like mode. And he's like, do you like, where are the emotions? And I'm like, well, this, I'm sorry. Like, this is something like, it's not normal to me, but it's, like, let's make it better, and then we can talk about our emotions. <laughs> like, and we're a community of doers. Yes. So it's yeah. like, well, you know, you move to the new place, if you do, and you do, mm -hmm. you set, and you make it all work, and you find the emergency contacts, and you find the jobs, and you... Yeah. And so when those things happen, it, it's all so close. Yeah, it is, and yeah, it's... Because, you know, it, it was the next-door neighbor's doorbell, but next time it right. could be your doorbell. Yeah, and that idea that... And I shared something this week and it was just like talking about, it was like 13 doorbells mm -hmm. and people didn't know, like some of my civilian friends didn't know what that meant. And I was like, I lived, 
I grew up not using people's doorbells. Like, you know what I mean? Like, how how can it be that separate, you know? And But you're so immersed in it. Like, yeah, we didn't use each other's doorbells. Like, that was like a code of like the military is like, do, you know, knock or just come in, but don't ring that doorbell because that's a whole like trigger, you know? Like, I have like chills just talking about it. Like, there was a guy one time in the time my dad was deployed there was a guy who was just lost looking for directions, but he was in his, whatever the fancy uniform is that they do notifications in, and he pulled up and started walking up the driveway and I lost it. Like, you know, and I was like 15 or 16 and my mom just froze. Like none of us knew what was going on. And he's like, I'm just looking for directions. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, just take it straight down. <laughs> so we both went to Texas A&M, but we met afterwards in El Paso um, and I mean, he was at a, we were at a bar, like he was cute, I started talking to him. Um, and he told me that very first night, cause I was like, well, what do you do for work? Like, you know, cross my fingers, he's like a business person or something, but I had a pretty good idea just cause of his haircut, things like that. But he was like, so I'm this thing called a first lieutenant. And I was like, wow. <laughs> Like, mm. <laughs> tell me more. Um, <laughs> so, but I had, I mean, I didn't say anything about my dad for a long time, obviously. But um, yeah, it's been, it's been interesting. Like there are parts of me that's very normal. Like I feel at home in a military community, like a military town is my hometown. Like it doesn't matter if we've never been stationed there or not. Like I find a way, there's familiar ways for me to dig in no matter where that is um so there's definitely like familiar parts there's a lot of um i was just talking to somebody yesterday you know about how late our husbands work and um i was like well and she's like so thanks for coming to dinner because i know this is like family time and i'm like well i counted i mean he's in the same room as me like that counts like and she's like yeah i just wish i wish i had known like that was a big learning curve for me like to know just to be happy with them in the same room and i'm like Oh, like that's, that's a win for me, like, you know. Um, so I think like some of that is is normal, but then other parts of it is like, oh my gosh, I can't believe like this is, we're doing this again, you know? Um, and it's new and exciting to him, but like, it was, right. it was like, like my moving. 16th move, like when we moved up here. It's his third or fourth, it's my 16th, like, you know, and he, you know, dealing with packers and housing and like all that kind of stuff. Um, so there's that, and then yeah, like the the coming home late or like canceling plans, like it's like, ugh, you know. And I think as an adult, like, cause I did go to college and was away for the army for seven years. Like I have those friends who are not in the military and because of social media, I can see that they all have picnics and they do all these things, you know? And it's like that comparison game of sorts that it's just like, oh, well, if only it could be normal. The story I was just talking about him find, telling me he's going to Afghanistan again. Um, we were, we weren't engaged yet, but we were engaged pretty quickly after the, he told us. And so I was like, okay, well, you know, but he, given the position he was in, like he couldn't even tell us when he'd be home on R&R &R or like any of that kind of stuff. So we kind of waited to do anything like, and, we're finally at a point where we thought, you know, October of 2020, we are supposed to be able to do something and then COVID happened. So that's how we ended up eloping in the Arctic wilderness. Um, just me and him and the chaplain and we Facebook streamed it. Um, and you know, we had people from all over the world watching and commenting. Uh, I think some of the virtual stuff's really great for military families. And my sister decided to move to Sweden in the middle there too. Like, cause I mean, that's, a, that's another huge thing about being army brats is like, we don't want to stay in the same place for too long. Nothing really scares us. Like I live in Alaska, she lives in Sweden. Like we, I, I went to college with people who live on the same street as their parents. Like, you know, cause they're afraid of that, losing that security blanket and stuff. But for us, we couldn't even like pick a place to go back to because they're still mobile you know as yeah, far as we know no yeah in that regard, no right? like, so yeah but it's i mean it's it's been interesting it's been like it's a totally different thing to be a spouse like there's some similarities but there's also not i feel a little guilty because like i always told my mom like oh well you know like you can you can get another husband like we can only have one dad <laughs> 
And so, and she's probably like, okay, yeah. So fashion. But now I'm like, oh my gosh, like I can't believe I said that, you know, or even thought that. Um, you know, and she did a lot of like the single parenting stuff and all that, but it is, it's a different, when you build your life, because you know, as a parent-child relationship, there's obviously things you expect and stuff, but when you have a partner, and you guys, and Dakota and I are very like equal, like we lived by our, we were independent on our own for so long that like we still like, we get like roommate fights basically, because it's hard for us to even like, you know, do some of that stuff. But when we're so equal, like it's hard when they're when they're gone, because it's like, oh, I have to do the dishes now and cook. Like, you know, I have to take care of the dogs. Like, so I can't imagine that experience and then also like because of the duration and how frequently it happened for my mom like I don't know how I mean she is just tough like it's like, like the word I would use which is so funny because I mean she can also like you know put it on charm like be the best co-pilot you know there is but she I mean she's the one like it was joke we do Dakota asked my dad like before he uh asked to marry me and my dad was like yeah, you know, they had their like bro conversation. He's like, you need to ask Tracy too. Like, you know, like, cause she is, I mean, she's an equal. What would be your advice to like, people who are just maybe marrying into it or starting like. Yeah. And you probably have a lot of friends that are right there. Yeah, there's, um, we, like, because we were gone for so long and Dakota's not from a military background, like, we have a lot of civilian friends. Um, and so we spend a lot of time just sort of trying to explain what's going on. Um, and we can't, you know, like, with, like, the wedding thing, I was like, here's plan Z. Um, and they just don't get it. Like, they're like, just tell them that you were getting married. I'm like, okay, you can call them and tell them that. Like, you know, but... But no, I mean, but we have, you know, one of the cool things that's come up here, you know, that Dakota's like a captain is like, he's sponsoring some of these like second lieutenants and first lieutenants as they PCS to Alaska. Um, and he's about to take company command. So I know that will be part of it um, for sure. I think, I think one of the things I learned from growing up like we did with my dad is like that the quality of your time together matters um, and appreciating, you know, being all in when you're together when you're in the same place as much as you can um, and so I think that's because in a way it sustains you know if you get that time Saturday night you know with you and your spouse or you and your family it can sustain you for the week of getting home at nine o'clock mm -hmm. and missing and um, I also try to like wait to eat dinner for him that's one of the things my mom told me to dry so it comes and goes <laughs> Dude, do that. Yeah, I mean, because when he comes home at nine o'clock at night, like I'm like, sorry, there's your plate. <laughs> like, me and the dogs already ate. We're going to bed. <laughs> I felt like that was the question I got asked the most. Like, how do I keep my career? Mm -hmm. It's not going to be easy. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of like cultural pressure on women in our generation to not be. I mean, there are, there are obviously people who want to stay at home and want to be full-time wives and mothers, and that's what they've chosen. But like uh, mainstream, I would almost say is like, don't do that. You know, like you're not you're not independent. You're not what all these things fill in the blank um, if you do that. And so there's like this confounding side of like cultural pressure to have a career and do all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I foresee that being a little bit of an interesting thing. I'm, we're still so young and we don't have kids. So I think that my job is like my, it's my little saving grace, like little thing over to the side. I work actually um, at one of the schools right up the street. I work with a Air Force spouse and she's like, I love this space. Like he's not in it. My kid's not in it. Like this is my bubble. Like, you know, and so I think for a lot of people, a job can be like that. Um, but there is also components of, well, what about the SFRG stuff? And what about, you know, and then you have to like, you know, you, you need the flexibility of whatever you choose. And that's not a choice for a lot of careers. Correct. And I think, you know, that was very hard. fortunate. That's hard too. Like as much as I, there were places we moved that I desperately wanted a job. Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't find one. Yeah. Right. Or you weren't able to, or you're like, well, we're here for 10 months. Mm -hmm. Like, 
Well, we, I initially chose, when I graduated from OT school, I chose to go somewhere away from Dakota to live there to have my first job for a year because I was just like, this is, like I can't work somewhere for six months and then, because he was going on a chemistry course, I was like, I can't do that and let my first resume thing be six months. You know, so, we, so I did that and we were supposed to meet on the flip side and then he got sent to Korea. So the whole like, you know, nine, 10 months apart turned into almost two and a half years. But going into an interview and being like, how can I, like what, you know, because they're not supposed to ask, but they always find a way somehow. Well, how'd you end up in Alaska, you know? And I'm like, oh, like his job, you know, like trying to be vague, trying to like not be a liar, but also not be like, yeah, I'm a military spouse because they see, and I mean, here on our third, they're gonna know because I'm in my third job and the next PCS, you know, but it just, and so then you hope that like you're the quality of your work shines through and like recommendations, but I mean, you get to a point where you're like, are they even gonna look at my resume? Like when they see six jobs, like, and I'm 30. And I'm like, <laughs> like, listen, you're right. I'm not yeah. gonna be here for very long, but I promise that while I'm here, I'm yep. gonna make your organization better. hundred percent. But, you know. And I think that the making it better is like that, goes back to that doer thing you were saying. Like I, I, I do not have patience for when someone sits around and talks about an issue and then was like, well, let's think about this in six months. Like, why? Like, why can't we do it now? You know what I mean? Like, and I think some of that is, I think it's the military. It could be my dad particularly, um, you know, but my mom's the same way. Like she does not, like she shows up and, you know, especially given their position, like they try to fix things and they want to know what's not working well and that's what they go after and they make a difference for families. And so that's a huge and role model I have. And I do the same thing at work. Like I, you know, like sitting around, I'm like, they're like, well, we'll work on that next school year. I'm like, it's September. Like, you know, like guys, <laughs> we have nine months. Like, so let's go, you know? Um, but, but it's a different, it's a different, I think people, civilians think differently, you know? Like, what's your five-year plan? Like, I can't tell you. Yeah, but Dakota did say something because he was like, you, you know, he's getting ready for company command and I was like talking to him about different leadership type thing because I took those classes in college. I was in a leadership position in my sorority, like all that kind of stuff. And he's like, huh, you should be, why aren't you in leadership at your job? I'm like, cause you keep moving me. Like I can't, like the, the, the lead position has a two year commitment. Like I, I can't give anybody a two year commit, you know, like I, so but that was kind of a funny moment where he was like, oh yeah, you're right. Like, so I think, I think the service members forget sometimes too. Like it is not easy, but I don't think I know any different, and so I think that's a big part of it. Um, I will say that finding a few military spouse, like mentor people um, that are a little bit ahead of the game, <laughs> you know, for you uh, are are very good resources. Um, you know, there's some, we even had a thing this week that like Dakota and I had a difference of opinions and I just like texted all of them. Like, I'm like, am I being irrational here? Like, you know, cause I mean, that's sometimes where it gets to is you're like, I cannot believe that the army is, is doing this right now. Like, and you want to be frustrated, but then your spouse is like, but I, it's my job, you know what I mean? And so like, you just feel for him and you feel for everybody. So sometimes bringing in that third party is not a terrible idea. Um, <laughs> I usually don't bring, it's, my parents come and go. I usually use someone a little bit closer. Another thing I really, really like and has given me a lot of joy is giving back to military kids. Um, finding different organizations and different ways to kind of plug in and love on those little kids because people did it for me, you know, and paying it forward. There's a lot of great organizations now. Um, and so every time I move, I try to get linked in with like either ACS or EFMP um, to work with that population because I think they're really cool. And they remind me sometimes like, you know, I can do this. Like there's little kids can do it. I can do it. It's so integral into my identity at this point that when people speak poorly on military, that feels like an attack on, you know, the closest thing I could relate to would be like your hometown or your state, you know, like I'm from Texas. And so if somebody was like talking crap on Texas, like any Texan who is worth their, you know, weight and salt will attack, you know, like, and it's like, it's hard, but you can do that because you know, you're supposed to, 
I've always, it's always been shown to me like, you, you know, the grace, like, you know, even people like who would protest, like outside of posts when we were younger, like my dad's like, well, I, that's why I do what I do so that they can have the right to do that, you know, and just to have that peace of mind is something that I am still working on. But I think I was, I was talking, you know, as we're, as a spouse now, a lot of people will ask like how my experience was as a military child because they're having children themselves and they like look to me to be like is it okay like should i stay <laughs> like, <laughs> and i'm like uh you know i mean you gotta make your own decision but i like my you know my elevator pitch of sorts is always like yes it was hard yes i went through things that kids are not supposed to go through however as someone who works with children now, I can tell you there's other kids who go through way worse, you know, or normal things that are not related to the military and they still get some of the same resiliency and stuff, but like on the flip side, like I'm proud of my dad, I'm proud of my husband, I'm proud of like my family. Um, I got to live in really cool places. I have a lot of soft skills, if you will, that I don't think I'd have otherwise. And so it's like, life's gonna be hard, like that's, Life is not easy for barely anybody. And I don't think it, for people who say it's easy, I don't actually think it's that easy. I think, you know, they, there's a lot of covering up and stuff. But so I think in, like, in the end, I always say like, it was hard, but it made me who I am and I wouldn't change it. So I still stand by that, even though everything that has been going on and, and you know, some of the fatigue associated with like going at 20, seven years of this. I don't think I would take it back. I think that, because I did three high schools in four years, and I was saying, well, high school sucks for everybody, you know? Like, <laughs> um, so I just think, yeah, I think it makes you who you are, just like everyone else has their experiences that make them who they are.